What's up addicts, I'm Jamie. I've had a ton of you guys ask me for some nutrition advice. I've been saying I was gonna do a video on it and I figured now is the perfect time because it's January. A lot of people in January decide that they want to clean up their eating habits, change some of their lifestyle patterns. And so I wanted to give you some advice that I have learned over years and years and years of not only figuring out the healthiest way to eat for the way that I work out, but also how to avoid that trap of becoming obsessed with what you eat. I actually actually had an eating disorder for a really long time and so when I decided to free myself from that because it's just a terrible way of living I wanted to find balance and I feel like I've finally been able to do that and find some freedom from food. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that, a little bit about the actual nutrition part of it, and I'm gonna show you what I would eat like in a week. First of all, this is something that I've been doing forever, planning your meals. Not only does it help with your budget, but it also helps with the way that your house is run and making sure that you don't end up eating fast food five days a week because it's really easy to do with how busy we all are. When I make a grocery list, I put each day of the week and I put what we're gonna have for dinner. What I do when I plan my meals is always make sure that there's gonna be a lot of vegetables involved. We have tacos, it's gonna have tons of vegetables and spinach in them, and then acorn squash bowls on Tuesday, which are squash, spinach, some sugar-free breakfast sausage, almonds, raisins or cranberries, depending on what you want. Homemade pizza on Wednesday. Thursday is air fried chicken, green beans, and mashed potatoes and mashed cauliflower. Friday is burgers, Brussels sprouts, and french fries. Sunday is cashew chicken with cauliflower rice. You'll notice I didn't have anything for Saturday. I always leave one day of the week open. To think that you're actually going to cook seven days a week It's because you're forcing yourself to do it and not allowing yourself any flexibility with your regimen, which is never a good thing. Usually when I make a grocery list, I put like a list of breakfast ideas, a list of lunch ideas, and then I do plan the dinners out. That way I know Thursday it's supposed to be really nice outside, so I'm going to put something on the menu that you can grill. Breakfast Breakfast is something that I don't always eat. And I know everyone says breakfast is the most important meal of the day and everything. If I'm not hungry, I'm not gonna force myself to eat. When I do eat breakfast, this is something, I actually eat egg witches more than often than these but these are basically the same idea. I have oatmeal and berries. That's one thing that I have on the list. And berries are the healthiest of all the fruit. They have the least amount of carbs and the least amount of sugar. I also love mangoes. They're probably my favorite fruit and we keep mandarin oranges in the house. We all love them. For lunch, a lot of times I will have leftovers from the night before, or I will have like a turkey lettuce wrap or a tuna lettuce wrap. I use these and I put it in lettuce, some cheese, maybe some spinach, maybe a pickle. These things are great. I've been eating them for a long time and there's a ton of different flavors and varieties. That's basically lunchtime. For dinner, I have my husband grill me these. Instead, this is the best, absolute best substitute for beef that I've ever had and I've had a lot of them. So that would be what I ate with burger. Now, I'm probably not gonna put a bun on my burger. I don't miss it. I haven't been eating buns for a long time. Every once in a while, I get a craving for one, so I eat one, but usually I wrap it in lettuce, ketchup, mustard, and then that would be paired with Brussels sprouts and french fries that we would use our air fryer or oven to bake. As far as the french fries go, the portions on your plate should look like a lot of vegetables and a small amount of french fries. Don't skip the french fries if you love french fries. That's called deprivation and living in the extremes and it's not good for anyone. Homemade pizza, we have these. They are low carb. There's only one carb in a third of the crust. If you ever look at a pizza crust, it's insane. There's so many carbs in it. When I make a pizza, I go to the produce section at the grocery store and they have those salads that are in the bag. There's kale and Brussels sprouts and poppy seed dressing and pumpkin seed. What I do is I take the crust, like usually a cauliflower crust, and I take a little bit of the dressing and I use that for my sauce. And then I put all the vegetables on top bake it with some cheese sprinkled on top, and then when it comes out, I put a little bit more of the dressing on. If they don't have that available, I would make my pizza with a ton of vegetables, like green peppers, onions, black olives. The main idea is that you're getting more vegetables. On Monday nights, I teach. I don't get home until like 9.30. The boys do a quick dinner, then I'll come home. Almost every week I eat one of these. It's my favorite thing that I found that's really, really quick and easy. It's 
delicious. You can get these pretty much anywhere. The only reason I look at nutrition labels now is to see how many carbs are in it. For the most part, I just try and think, does that have a lot of vegetables? Is that going to have things that nourish my body like quinoa? That's the protein in it. Is it going to be good for me to eat before I go to bed? Like, am I going to feel bad in the morning? Let's talk about drinks for a minute. I love carbonation. This is something that I found that I absolutely love. This flavor in particular tastes just like Dr. Pepper. It's super, super, super healthy for you. It's probiotics. This whole can only has 10 calories, three carbs. It's great. I drink Coke Zero. I don't drink a ton of it, but if I'm craving a Coke, that's what I have. This is all we had in the fridge because we decided to try something new we saw it at the grocery store. The point is, sometimes I'll have a Coke Zero. Every single morning, I have coffee. I can't live without it. Most of the time, I only drink about half of a cup. I always have some sort of organic coffee. Sometimes I use Newman Organics, and sometimes I can find a really good organic coffee that I love from the local health store. I researched a lot about organic food and different products and what's worth the money and what's not. Everything I read said coffee, milk, and meat. We try to do that as often as possible and always with coffee. Snacks. Always have snacks with you when you are going to be out of the house for a long period of time or else you're going to stop and get fast food. Here are some of the snacks that I eat. These are for when I am feeling like I have to have some chocolate, like a candy bar, I need something sweet. Sometimes I will eat the candy bar and that's perfectly fine. But these are really truly something that I found that doesn't leave me wishing that I had eaten a candy bar or sad or feeling deprived at all. They have lots of protein, so if I eat them after a workout, it's amazing because it's replenishing my muscles after they've been torn down. I can eat them for breakfast, but I really like to save them for the afternoon because in the afternoon is when I have that really sweet craving. There are so many different flavors. Coconut almond is my absolute favorite. It tastes just like an almond joy, which I love. So if you have a built bar in the afternoon, it's like a little snack that gets you a protein protein boost. It tastes like a candy bar. It's so many things that you're hitting that your body is needing. It really is the best snack to keep with you in your car. I actually keep a packet of peanut butter and a built bar in my workout bag in case I'm at work a little bit longer than I thought and I need some food that I know is going to give me energy and fuel. Sometimes I want Cheez-Its. So I eat Cheez-Its. If you love Cheez-Its and you want a good alternative, these right here are good too. They are grain-free. I'm not like a grain-free, gluten-free, dairy-free type of person. I just eat as little as possible foods that have ingredients that I know are not the right thing for my body. We're gonna talk about going out to dinner. If you go out to dinner and you have been craving chicken strips and french fries all week, order the chicken strips and french fries, okay? Let yourself have that. Now, if you have had a week where it's like crap, we went to Wendy's this night and then we had to stop and we had dinner and I didn't choose something healthy this night and you look back on the week and you're like, man, that's like four times this week, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, that I've had something that was like really, really not good for me. So now I'm gonna choose something healthy. My favorite thing to do whenever you go out to eat, if you're trying to make a healthy choice, is gonna be something like salmon with vegetables and get a salad. If you're at a Mexican restaurant, I usually get fajitas. So we actually went out to dinner last night and I got fajitas. I get chicken fajitas and I don't eat the tortillas with them. I just eat the meat and the vegetables. It's delicious. I never ever feel sad that I ordered something healthy ever. And I also never feel guilty if I chose something not healthy because that's called balance and it's really important to achieve. Dessert. Here's my thing about dessert. If you are trying to eat healthy, change your lifestyle, have more energy and have more livelihood, that is amazing. Do not put yourself in this extreme of I cannot have these things because they're bad for me. No food is either good or bad. There are foods that are better for you nutritionally, but no food is bad. All food helps us survive. And we have to view food as something that is a gift to us to nourish us and keep us alive and keep us going. Should we make as good of choices as possible? Yes, but sometimes making the right choice means letting yourself have something that maybe, you know, another fitness professional would tell you, you can only have that on a cheat day. That's just not me. I think that you should allow yourself to have food that you enjoy every day, little bits at a time. I do have dessert. I don't have it every night, I wouldn't say, but if I did, I wouldn't feel bad about it. 
when I want dessert, I eat dessert. I haven't always been that way. It's just a better lifestyle for me, which is gonna bring us around to the most important aspect of this video, which is your relationship with food, mentally, emotionally, physically, I wanted to kind of give you some tips on how you can stop that pendulum swing between the two extremes and find a nice balance for yourself. Number one, I've already said it, stop looking at food as being good or bad for you. You just ask yourself questions about how you want to feel before you make the choice of what to eat instead of looking at the food, trying to think about how many calories it has, if you've earned it, what you're gonna have to do to work it off, Food is not meant for that. Food is a gift and when we treat it as either a reward or a punishment and it affects the way we feel emotionally, that is a cue for us that we are in the extremes and that we need to bring it back in. If you find yourself going a few days where you're like, man, I really have not eaten well, then you recognize that by the way that you feel and you're like, I don't wanna feel this way anymore, so I'm gonna clean things up for a little bit. And I wouldn't say that's a roller coaster or a yo-yo. It's just being aware of your body and its connection to food. The other thing is after you eat something that before you would have probably thought is a bad food or something that you shouldn't eat, don't dwell on it. While you're eating it, go, I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna enjoy it, and I'm gonna be okay with it. After you're finished, take a breath and go, that was really good. I'm glad that I did that and now I'm gonna move on. Because if you have ever had any sort of food obsession like I have, you dwell over it, you feel bad about it, and then you go to bed feeling terrible about yourself and then you wake up the next day and you punish yourself with the same cycle over and over and over. That is just not living a life. I've been there. It's a dangerous and sad place to be. If you have a strict diet and you have a strict workout regimen and it works for you and you feel good, then that is amazing, great for you. But so many of us struggle to find that balance between eating healthy and not being obsessed. I don't endorse or encourage counting calories because that leads to food obsession and that makes the food that is meant to nourish us more of a number than a gift. It's just something that takes all of your energy to put everything you eat into an app and count calories. I spent years of my life doing it. Gosh, I think about how much time I wasted and how many things I could have accomplished had I not been so focused on something that really truly didn't mean that much. Basic rules of thumb for your overall health and well being. If you take anything from this video, this is what I would suggest. Number one, 50% of what you eat should be a vegetable. Number two, Drink a lot of water. I drink one of these every day. It hasn't always been like that. I'm so, so glad that I started doing that. Those are the first two rules. The third one is try and get as much sleep as possible so that you can be the best version of yourself, energetic and healthy. And it's something that we all struggle with. We have to keep ourselves in check, but they are very, very important habits to try and instill. More importantly, don't deprive yourself, but don't live in the extremes either. I want you to understand completely and fully that when you take ownership for your body and you decide that you love your body and you appreciate everything that it does for you and it brings so much joy Joy into your life because without your body you can't dance you can't travel you can't play with your kids when you recognize that that is what our body is for and you truly are appreciative and thankful for it you want to take care of it there is a misconception about self-love oh I love my body I can just eat junk all the time and I feel good about myself or the other way around I hate my body so I have to eat healthy all the time that is so backwards I love my body so I'm going to eat as many healthy foods as I can to nourish her and make sure that I'm able to accomplish everything I want to accomplish. And then I love my body, so I'm going to allow myself to enjoy certain foods and wine and ice cream with my kids. And I'm not going to deprive myself of those memories really, because when you're at a party and you're like, I, I want that cake, I want that cake, but nope, nope, I'm not gonna eat the cake. And everyone else is eating it. You're sitting there drinking your water. I've been there and I call it gray space. That's why we talk about living life in color. That is a gray space where you feel sad and lonely and just like this feeling that you can't really express. That's the feeling that I would have whenever I was in these extremes of deprivation. I'm so thankful that I've been able to find some balance. It's completely changed my life. I went from eating 
almost perfect and then I would freak out and have a binge to eating like what I just described very balanced I don't look at calories I don't obsess over it I don't count I don't waste my time that is just so much wasted energy and I think that our bodies hold on to that stress and anxiety that we build around the expectation of eating perfect my body not only looks better but it feels a million times better. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Also, these Built Bars, they're amazing. I'm so thankful that I have them in my toolkit. We have a promo code that you can use. It's the Studio 20. Check the link in the description and you get 20% off your entire order. Take advantage of that while our promo code is active. Try them out for yourself. I promise you, you'll love them. Everyone that I've given one to is like, oh my gosh, these are so good. If you have any questions again, drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer all of your questions that you might still have after this long ass video.